Thurlis, the splendid backdrop, acknowledged far and wide as a superb hurling surface. The earlier noisy atmosphere in the town now clearly transferred to the ground for one of the showpiece occasions of the sporting year. The champions hoping to play a champion part in the unfolding drama are unchanged from the side that narrowly edged out tip in the semi-final. This means that there are just two changes from last year's 15. Turlock Herbert, the left half back this afternoon, replaces Joe O'Connor, while Sean O'Neill comes in for Ger Hegarty. Declan Nash now plays at left corner back alongside his brother Mike, while Kieran Carey is in the pivotal half-back position, thereby allowing team captain Mike Houlihan team up with Sean O'Neill. The Bannermen are certainly not slow about ringing the changes as they bid to make it third time lucky. Three changes from the team that started against Cork five weeks ago. Frank Lowen joins his brother Brian on the Clare full back line. He had been busy with exams prior to that match. Ollie Baker, the goal hero, starts in midfield alongside Fergal Hagerty, while top of the right is the grandson of a former Limerick legend, the late Jackie Parr. Today, Stephen McNamara starts a first Munster final. The key tie on this decider just has to be between Shawnee McMahon, Clare centre-half back, just about over a worrying shoulder injury, and Limerick's top scorer, Gary Kirby, who scored nine points when the teams clashed in last year's final. The referee today is Johnny MacDonald from Tipperary, 41-year-old official, taking charge of his first Munster senior final, and it's Limerick who won the toss, opting to play with the wind at their backs for the first half from right to left, straight away it's Liam Doyle. Good intervention here by Kieran Carey, Doyle battling back, but the referee says he fouled, and that's got to be a free to Clare, who made some switches with Fergal Hagerty going to left half forward, and James e. O'Connor, not unexpectedly, is in midfield, and the two corner forwards have also switched wings. So even Craig of the atmosphere really is quite electric and Limerick outnumber Clare supporters. Yes, they do. The, there's a huge, huge Limerick contingent here. Nicely taken, dropped in well. Good opening chance here. Went off the stick in the end there of TJ Ryan. But huge free belted in there by the left out back, Turlock Herbert. It's the 106th Monster Hurling final and the sixth final involving Clare and Limerick. And of course, Limerick with that 100% record so far. So a big day for both counties. Well caught there by Sean O'Neill. Didn't get it away too well. Mike Houlihan misses his shot. And even the second time, finally getting it forward as far as Mike Galligan, who had a field day last year in the Monster final. Today he can expect closer exchanges, I think. Brian Rowan clearing his lines. Well, that'll be a sideline ball. Both sets of players, not unnaturally, were very nervous in the dressing rooms before this match. Dave Clark today playing an eighth championship match. He's had a busy last 18 months with club and inter-county activity. Beautifully caught up, delivered inside again, but just overhit. And nobody in the full forward line. Part Heffernan in particular able to make anything of it. And uh, that's the second wide now where neither the corner forward nor the full forward were able to get the ball. The corner forward's out too far. And I, I have a feeling with Limerick then with the wind, the corner forwards need to stay in more. So against the breeze, David Fitzgerald pucking it out into his own half forward line. Runs on down there towards Stephen McNamara. Nipping in is Steve McDonough. McDonough's clearance into space towards TJ Ryan. Gathered up well there against Frank Lowen. Lowen had a bit of a nightmare here against Kilkenny in the league final of the surface. Did well, however, when he came in against Cork in the second half of the semi final. Galligan knocking it forward towards TJ Ryan. Referee says play on. Into open space towards Damien Quigley. Much expected of Quigley. Back down to Galligan. It falls. Real stalemate situation in the end. Only broken up by the referee's whistle. And it's going to be a free out. Clara was fouled as Liam Doyle from Bodike. One of the few clear success stories, I think, from last year's Monster final. He played corner back that day and acquitted himself really well. well. Full forward has been a problem position for Limerick in recent times. David Fitzgerald. Again, down into the corner towards Stephen McNamara. But Steve McDonough has been winning the early tosses there. Appeals by Frankie Carroll, but it's going to be Clare's ball. Seem to have gone off a clear stick, I must say. 
Yes, I think I think that was a wrong decision by the umpire. The umpire across there is Ger Harrington, and the referee Terry McDonnell has overruled the Cork official, and it's going to be Limerick's sideline cut. Once we get the ball back. Interesting that they have line line ball or um, ball boys down the side. There was a young ball boy, a young boy threw in the ball there on the far side in blue. And we'll see full equality in a few years' time. We'll have ball girls, I'm sure, as well. I'm sure we will. Taken down by Liam Doyle, but only enough to take the sting out of it. Feed it to Mike Galligan, who raises the first white flag. Galligan from Cahorn, setting Limerick on their way, or at least they'd like to think so. Well, there was just a hint of a chance that they might have been able to get that ball away, but it was touched down there by Liam Doyle. And that's where Galligan was in there to profit. Both sides are a bit nervous at the moment. It'll take them a while to settle down. Ollie Baker fumbling. Comes across to James O'Connor. Kieran Carey comfortably under it. Step inside from the inside forward line once again. Magnificently high in the air by Michael O'Halloran. O'Halloran hand passing it to Doyle. In the early moments of this exchange, to Shorty McMahon, how happy is he that that shoulder has recovered sufficiently? That'll be interesting to see. The block down there of Conor Clancy's shot. Here he is again. A lumbustious full forward Clancy, hooked again by Mike Nash. And then it's Dave Clark who kicks it away, but only as far as the midfield of Ali Baker. Baker unable to go on the left hand side. O'Loughlin, the sparrow. Giving possession away. Out it comes towards the left half back, who is Anthony Daly, the team captain. Stephen McNamara trying to nudge it inside there. Limerick under severe pressure. This is P.J. O'Connell, centre half forward, and he just had enough room to put it over the bar. He advanced well that time, and the fair flags flying high and proudly here at Semple Stadium. And it's a point of peace. All that after some indecision in front of the Limerick goal. Yes, indeed. Uh, here was a ball. The ball should be cleared. Declan Nash had it, lost possession. PJ O'Connor gets it. Mike, Mike Nash stops him, and then he makes space for himself and flicks the ball over. Good point for Clare. Always reminds me of a Spanish violinist. PJ O'Connell has that kind of swagger in his play. Here he is again. An inviting ball forward there. Herbert going across. Just trying to keep it away from his man. And his man does well. Fergie Tui. And that's going to the left, but kept in play by Steve McDonough. Towards Dave Clark. Making sure it's kept away there from Stephen McDamara. And the referee's whistle is sounded. That's going to be a free out for Limerick. Some over-aggressive play, and it's heating up quite considerably. The linesman, Ger Harrington, having to go in there just to try and defuse the situation. On the Clare bench, they've seen so much disappointment down the years, but today they're hoping it's the glory day at last. Since Clare last won a major honour, the National League at the end of the 70s, they have lost eight major finals between Munster Championship and League Finals. Dave Clark, Ollie Baker gathering. The supply in low. Runs on well. Gerald Lachlan, a sparrow looking for another point. And Clara in front. Gerald Lachlan goes back to top of the left. That's his first point. And Clare lead for the first time in the match. Just seven minutes gone. There's a badly hit, a badly hit free ball by Clark. Mike Hoolan wasn't ready for it. Clare got it up the field and over the bar. A good score for Clare against a very strong breeze. It has to be a little bit worrying for Limerick, even at this early stage, that midfield isn't functioning as well as it might. Here's Shawnee McMahon. And there was a little nudge in the back, quite clearly seen by the referee, by P.J. O'Connell on his man. Uh, Gary Kirby is coming out to take this. It's, uh, it's what, 90 yards out? A bit ambitious even by his standards, but the breeze is behind him and um, blowing slightly away right of centre. Yeah, the, the problem there is there's nobody gone in centre forward. Limerick are missing a centre forward, so Gary expects to put this ball over the barrel wide. Rolls it up well. Struck in towards the square. 
Good goalkeeping by David Fitzgerald. Pressurised by Damien Quigley. And the pressure paying off because it's going to be a sideline ball. So from Limerick's point of view, bringing out Gary Kirby to take that wasn't a bad decision at all because it now results in the pressure staying on them. And it's Mark Gallagher who's going to take the sideline cut. Yeah, Ian Doyle coping with it well. Driving it off on his left-hand side. Ali Baker in pursuit with Mike Houlihan. And once again, it's pressure on the Clare backs. I, I have to query Michael Galligan taking that sideline ball. He took the ball and his, his man cleared it. Like he came out and I think a centre field man should have taken the ball and Michael Galligan should have gone into the forwards. So the Liberty captain showing a bit of variation to Dave Clark. Touched on its way. And that's gone wide. So already three Limerick Warriors clear without a wide so far, and they have the lead, of course. Clare today hoping to bridge 63 years, a long, long time indeed, since their last win in Munster in 1932. Well, they were close, as I remember it last year, to Limerick for about 20 minutes in the first half, and then the gap widened quite considerably. Here's Anthony Daly, good block down. Limerick very much the favourites, Mike Coolahan. Knocked inside. This is Pat Heffernan. Sending in that shot and putting it over the bar. Well, that's a bit more like it from the Limerick inside forward line. And Pat Heffernan from Black Rock, the first of them to score. They and just two points a piece. the game is, Jared, that the centre-back had plenty of time to clear it and Gary Kirby got in and got his hook in and blocked it. And here it is again, he was 45 metres out when he hit that shot. Accuracy personified, straight between the posts. Mike Hulham trying to win the exchanges now at midfield. Dave Clark in there, nippy and quick. Dashing forward, getting away from Ali Baker. Crossing the 45 metre line to Gallagher, who held on securely. The shot to try and restore Limerick's lead, but he hasn't done so. And Limerick have a player injured on the ground on the 45 metre line. And the referee is speaking to Liam Doyle of Clare. You, you'd wonder why he was speaking to the Clare player, you know. Um, I know it was possibly a late tackle, but if it was a late tackle, then it's either a free or, or advantage. And in this case, I think he gave the advantage. Well, it's Dave Clark from Kilmallock who's down injured. We might just see it again here as he was racing forward. Made a lot of headway. Out yes, came all Doyle. The ball is well gone. May challenge. May challenge, yes. Dave Clark made of steel. Back he goes into the half-back line. He's kind of dazed at the moment, though, Jerp. That went by Perlock Herbert. On to P.J. O'Connell. Didn't get much length in his strike. Sean O'Neill is back there. Recovering well. And that's going over the sideline. Clare's ball. But again, again, Jerry, I, I question the referee there. There was a push, definitely a push in the back, but he's letting the play flow. Standard of play so far isn't exactly catching the imagination, I have to say. And yet to settle down. James e. O'Connor runs by Dave. Tyler Herbert off to P.G. O'Connell and he's put it wide. Clare's first wide. Still two points apiece. Yes, there's still a lot of tenseness there. The occasion is, is a little bit too much for him at the moment and it'll be another few minutes before they get into the floor again. Joe Quaid's puck out, wind assisted. Into the, ins into the half forward line. James e. O'Connor. They were playing at midfield in spite of the number 12 on his back. This is the player who should have been at midfield, Fergal Hagerty. Hagerty advancing well. Oh, he's made a good 20 metres. Dave Clark trying to hook him. Still Hagerty and Clark did really well. That's great skill. An object lesson, I think, for any youngsters watching this programme, not to give up, time the hook well, and that he did to perfection. O'Connor, one-handed, trying to knock it forward. Three Limerick players around him. One of them is Sean O'Neill. Inside towards Pat Heffernan once again. 
trying to get the measure of Brian Rowan, some pushing, referees this play on, Damien Quigley advancing with great purpose, Quigley, oh. and a chance of the first goal and he's put it wide, and the referee says it's going to be a free in in any case. I don't think they heard the referee's whistle, it's going to be free from the 20 metre line, and David Fitzgerald in real distress. Yes, and the cornerback is, now there's Quigley going through, now watch the cornerback here and the pull across the elbow. Look at that. Yes, dangerous David, play, quite David, definitely. David Fitzgerald comes out very well, and he crashes into his own man and is injured, and the ball has gone wide. And Michael O'Halloran has had his name taken for that. So the booking confirmed. Well, it was a dangerous challenge there on David Fitzgerald, who's in considerable distress. So watch it from a different angle this time. It doesn't look any better this time. Quigley advancing well. And this was the hurley was lashed out really dangerously and Quigley indeed collided with the goalkeeper. Um, he collided with the goalkeeper and then the goalkeeper collided with the cornerback as well and that's where he got the injury. Uh, again, I'd have to query how many steps um, Damien Quigley took. I think, I think he took about five or six. Well, he was pulled up for a goal in the Tipperary match. He'd taken six or seven steps on that occasion. Here's Gary Kirby, that's gone off. Brian Lowen's stick, it's collected by his brother Frank. It should have been a limerick. Point put over the bar from the free. Instead, Clare get away, and it's still two points each. Anthony Daly. Those are perhaps the little breaks they're going to require if they're to engineer a victory here after all the barren years. Quigley again, certainly a thorn on the side of the Clare defence, in particular Michael O'Halloran, who has to be on his best behaviour now, being booked already. And the referee says, bring it back here to the 20 metre line. Sense, but Limerick at the free. And having missed a fairly simple one a little while ago, you can be sure that Gary Kirby will take extreme caution and concern over this one. And for not retreating fast enough, no. for querying the decision, it's Very free decision. from a more favourable position. Yeah, I think Clare are getting a little bit upset over that. And Gary Kirby tops it over the bar. His first point. And Limerick with the lead once again. Yes, Quigley is causing problems in there. I think if Limerick keep the ball pumped into the corner here, that can cause a lot of problems for the Clare full-back line. Well, they were saying in Limerick during the week that Damien Quigley was due a good one. <laughs> Turla Carbert. And it's caught by right. Fergie Tui. Low ball down to the corner. McNamara. Too near the sideline. That's Declan Nash back there. Very tidy and effective player. Getting away from Conor Clancy. Shoulder. And uh, at the hill of the linesman was indicating that it wasn't a fair shoulder. He had to flag up quickly, but the referee said that it was a perfectly fairly executed shoulder to shoulder. I think you have to be a mathematician today to know what a shoulder is. I think somehow it's connected to my neck. This is. Ollie Baker, the man who did the damage against Cork in the semi-final. He flossed it. So we're trying to get it back. Comes to Ollie Baker again, a more favourable angle, and that's a bad miss. Well, he's ruined his luck. And I can tell you several thousand Clare people are in complete empathy with him. He's getting the better of the exchange with Michael Houlihan, though. Uh, Michael, Mike doesn't seem to be on form at the moment. Of course, he had this disappointing performance also against Tipperary in the semi-final. Frankie Carroll under the stopping ball with Anthony Daly. James e. O'Connor. On the sideline ball. Yeah, the Limerick half forward line are in a bit of trouble. They're not dominating the game, and the Clare, Clare are winning a lot of ball at the half back line. Frankie isn't getting to the ball and isn't moving it fast enough, so on the far side, we're in Limerick are in trouble. Here's Anthony Daly. Beautifully cut down towards PJ O'Connell. Kieran Carey hoping to dominate as usual that particular sector of the Limerick defence. So the face of Ollie Baker ready to take the sideline cut. And the referee just wanting the other players back the requisite distance. to the corner. 
towards Gerald Lachlan. And the master in that particular sector of the field has certainly been Steve McDuff. Sean McMahon rising upward, drops it down. Gary Kerwin trying to carry it on. Supported by Frankie Carroll. Back goes McMahon once again. High challenge by Carroll. Three out. A real flare up here. They're angry with the challenge scorer by Frankie Carroll. And Frankie being called across here by referee Johnny McDonnell. So we have another name going in the book for this challenge here. As Shawnee McMahon was coming out with possession, high and dangerous. Yes, it was a dangerous tackle by Frankie. It was head high and it's, it's as simple as free, free for Clare. We're kidding the end Well, Jerry Lockdown who's done so well to give this side belief in themselves. And indeed, he went on the record, of course, after the league final here against Kilkenny, as saying that Clare would win the Munster Championship. They didn't believe him. But they did it against Cork to get to this third final in a row. Limerick the leaders. Against the breeze. Anthony Daly dropping it in there. Towards the full forward. Conor Clancy. This is a good run, but one-handed, not causing any problems to Joe Quaid. Then running into a bit of a cul-de-sac, losing possession. Mike Knapp's working on it. That could have been so dangerous. Joe Quaid seemed to have it comfortably gathered. Yes, it, it, it appears Limerick lack urgency around the field at the moment. Half forward line are not urgent enough, full back line goalkeeper not urgent enough in clearing the ball. There was a little worry, I can tell you, in the uh, Limerick backroom team that the team might not have been as well focused as they should have been because having beaten Tipperary and having beaten Clare so easily last year, they were expected to win. And this is the full forward, I think, Conor Clancy. And they're preparing Eamon Taff. Taffo had a bit of a hamstring injury. Sherlock Nan with a word to his full forward. I think he's saying, if you're OK, into business quickly. We're just under 15 minutes to go to the interval. Very low scoring monster final so far. So real. Out as far as Frankie Carroll. It reaches Dave Clark. Kicked well by Terrell Auckland. Sean O'Neill from Limerick, adding to it. Towards Damien Quigley's corner. And he really has the beating of Michael O'Halloran so far. Taking up Michael O'Halloran in real trouble against this fellow. Good skills, tight control. And then there's Patrick Fitzgerald to back him up. Back to Mike Galligan. Going for the score. Just needs that amount of room and he pops it over the bar. A second point for Mike Galligan. Well, he's not the kind of player who'll go in there and mix it all that much, but he's a stylish performer, and when it comes out to him, when he gets free chances, he'll take those scores with some ease. There it is, Pat Heffernan gets the ball, he falls on his back, and beautiful hand pass over his head, Mike makes space, and gets the ball just over a beautiful score. Well, Gallagher had an easy time that last year, scoring seven points against the Clare uh, defence. Here's Sean O'Neill, exerting a greater influence now in the midfield. Mike Gallagher. Into space, Shawnee McMahon showing no real hint of it. shoulder injury that caused him so much trouble in the semi final. Frankie Carroll gets it back, and that's gone to the left. Five wides for Limerick, two for Clare. Do you know Limerick. the worrying thing about this, Jerry, is there's 22 minutes gone, and Limerick have the breeze and have only four points up on the board. How strong a wind do you think it is? It's extremely strong because it's blown directly down the field. But I think teams can play better against the breeze than with it. P.J. O'Connell missing his shot. Overhanded forward by Turlock Herbert. Mike Gallagher now. Knocked forward towards T.J. Ryan. And Frankie Carroll has it. Frankie leading the charge of the light brigade. The shot, and it's over the bar. forward line has now scored and Frankie Carroll extends Limerick's lead it's only five points to two and there's a long way to go yet there's the ball Frankie gets it now he goes seems to go off at half speed and there are two clear men on him and he pucks the ball beautiful score but I would have thought that Claire should have hooked him it's a free to Claire and Shawnee McMahon shaping up like he might be the one to take it Remember the long-range freeze against Kilkenny in the league final? He pointed four of those. Well, the rumour mongers before this match had a field day suggesting that he wouldn't play and that there would be wholesale 
restructuring of the Clare team. But thankfully, they are unchanged. The referee is down having a chat with one of his umpires and issuing a warning. Stephen McNamara and Dave Clark are the players he's been talking to. All concentration then for Sean McMahon. One they need, it's going right, however. And it remains five points to two. Listen, the game still hasn't settled down. There's a lot of bad hurling and there's some good hurling, but it still has to get going. Clare will be marginally happier in that they're keeping it tight. Here's Gary Kirby. Again, getting some latitude. Normally a very good striker of the ball. That one has gone to the left. And Mike Galligan's on the ground with a facial injury. There's, there's a great three raw going on in centre field. John O'Neill wants to mark um, Ali Baker. But he's staying on James O'Connor. And Galligan got a ball. He doesn't. Did you see it, Jer? Afraid not. Still a fair bit of re-rod, Ruila Bull, as you suggested, midfield, but it's settled down now. Dave Clark under it. Kieran Carey just behind him to lend assistance. One-handed forward, Anthony Daly there. And the Clare captain winning the free. Clare's tactic at the moment is to stop Kieran Carey from bursting forward, and so far they have succeeded in doing this. He's not able to get away like he got away against the Prairie. This is the tenth free of the match. Not any great length. Kieran Carey whipping it away. James O'Connor. Is it straight? It is. O'Connor puts it between the posts. His first point. Clare staying nicely in touch. They won't worry, I'm sure, about the standard of play if they can win after all the long, barren years of failure. Clare making some further positional switches in their forward line as we follow the flight path of the ball. And McMahon has kicked it forward only as far as Gary Kirby to Mike Gallagher. There's a goal chance here for Limerick. Clare back there quickly, closing him down. Sensing the danger, kicked away by Frank Cohen. Frankie Carroll. Taken up by TJ Rowe. Cross towards Damien Quigley. Quigley trying to get onto it, whipping it, not causing any problems for David Fitzgerald, however, stepping it away from the incoming Damien Quigley. It's taken up by Gerald Lockton, now playing at left half forward, with Fergal Higgerty gone in to top of the left. Steve McDonough, what a game he's playing for Limerick. Towards Frankie Carroll, he's outmarked, however. James O'Connor, one of the two who's on him. Downfield to Stephen McNamara. This nephew of the great Kerry footballer, Joe Parr, and grandson of Jackie, is on his way for Clare against Lemerick inside here, towards Conor Clancy, stopped somehow, and that's gone wide, but it's going to be a penalty, I think. The referee deciding that it's a penalty after that great run through there, and David Fitzgerald may well be coming up to take it. Tony Considine, one of the selectors, is going out to have a word in the middle of the field with David Fitzgerald. I'm sure he's telling him to either go for a goal or a point. At this stage, they'd hardly bring him up from the goal if he wasn't going to go for a goal himself. Where, where are the markings for the, the players on the field to, to stay outside? I don't see any markings. There's, 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 none here. Here. there's none here. It's missing this afternoon, well spotted. It's strange for a goalie to, to take it, but it doesn't matter. I suppose if he scores, they'll be, they'll be delighted. Remember John Commons of the 1986 All-Ireland Final? David Fitzgerald, here's the goal chance for him for Clare. He scored! 28 minutes into the first half. And now he's racing back, and the puck out's been taken. Will he win his race? Play continues. Fitzgerald's on his way, and Gary Kirby has been fouled. By not one, but two or three Clare players up there. And one of them has been called across. Yes, Baker. Baker gave a, a full frontal attack on Gary. It's nasty. And it's Ollie Baker who's getting his name taken. This is where David Fitzgerald was racing back. Gary Kirby had possession. Watch for Baker coming across Number and nine. fouling him there. 
looked ugly and was. Well, he stays on, he's lucky. Gerald Arcan was in there quickly, I'm sure, just to tell him to take it easy. We need you on the park. But there's the goal scoring here, on unlike you on a bat. He's given Clare the lead by 1-3 to five points. There's no, there's no smoothness in the game in either side today. It's just missed chances, broken ball, and there's no move, great movement in it. Here's the equaliser, however, from Gary Kirby. Third time in the match, the teams have been level. There's a lack of fluency, a lack of pattern as well. No doubting the resolve and the energy put in by both teams, however. Mike Coolahan beaten in the air by Ollie Baker. Declan Nash, neat pick up. Faces another challenge, however. Taken away by Turlock Carver, taken away from his own man. Down towards Pat Hagerty, broken down, Brian Lowen. Didn't get it away too far only as far as Damien Quigley. Put under some considerable pressure by a couple of player backs. He plays on, Quigley's given an advantage. Stop with the goalkeeper. Didn't come down nicely for Pat Hagerty, however. To get well saved by David Fitzgerald. And that's going to be a free out. The cheers ringing around Central Stadium from the player following up for this man here, for David Fitzgerald, a senior since 1990. As he brought up two magnificent saves there, saves that that uh, player had to save really. Um, quickly shot one great ball in, he blocked it, ball came out, Heffernan hit another one, the ball was blocked again. Tremendous saves by David Fitzgerald. Free taken against the breeze, of course. Down towards Ollie Baker. Didn't make a connection. It says Mark Coulthard appreciating the urgency now of Limerick's need. In towards Pat Heffernan, runs in. David Fitzgerald reading the signals, fumbled. And that's going to be a 65. Jerry, at the start of the game, I said that uh, I felt the Limerick forwards were too far out. I can't understand why TJ, TJ Ryan is so far out and, my, and uh, when the ball drops into the full forward line because he's outside the full forward instead, instead of being inside in case the ball broke inside. And three or four balls have gone wide on that particular side. Truth is, he's been out of the match by and large. So the 65 to be taken by Gary Kirby. His 12 points against Tip included a penalty of 65 and seven ordinary frees. Where's this one going to end up? Over the bar! A third point for Gary Kirby and the lead changing hands now for the fifth time. Fingers. There's nearly 31 minutes gone and Limerick are only seven points and Clare won three against the Breeze. That's a tremendous score for Clare. Yes, Clare, I think, will be the happier. But they've been in happy positions in the past as well after a first half. And they haven't always gone on to justify the faith of their fans. Oh, that's a bad pass there by Liam Doyle. Straight to Damien Quigley, surely put this over. Out to TJ Ryan, was running away from him. Did well initially, but then he's touched him down. Well, he's very annoyed. As they say in rugby, he took the wrong option. This is where Damien Quigley was stealing in here. The cover was very poor because they were expecting a decent hand pass from Liam Doyle. And that's where I thought TJ Ryan just might have it. But his first touch really left him down. Yes. Uh, I, think, I think myself he should have, he should have taken his own, point, his own score because there were two Clermen there. There was a Limerick man. And then there was, there was two on two. So I think um, Quigley should have taken his own score. Colin Flynn's in there alongside Ger Lochnan to attend to Liam Doyle, a hand injury. In terms yeah. of scoring chances so far, Limerick with 18 chances and they've taken seven of them. Clare have had only eight chances, they've taken four. That's some statistic. One of them, of course, a penalty. Turlock Herbert stays back, doesn't reach him. Whipped away instead by Mike Gallagher, inside towards Damian Quigley. Runs on to Pat Heffernan. The corner forward's not running ahead, but it doesn't come for them, and so it's Anthony Daly. Kieran Kerry trying to break it up. Trying to exert even greater influence around that sector of the field as we watch Stephen McNamara. Good run forward by McNamara. 
Low inside. Taken by Fergie Dewey. And the referee says he was fouled, and it's a free in. The foul committed there by Thurla Kerbert from Ahan. At the moment, I think Limerick are, are failing in a number of places. Thurla Kerbert is in trouble at left half back. Frankie Carroll is in terrible trouble at right half forward. And Clare aren't taking advantage of those situations. I suppose it's difficult from a Clare perspective. They've been near before, but never quite had the confidence to go the whole way. James O'Connor, the free seems to run away from, but he gathered it well. And that's his second point, and now the side's level for the fourth time in this monster final. A minute to go to half-time. Liam Doyle comes away well towards Stephen McNamara, trying to get the better of Steve McDonough. Tui coming in quickly. Stopped somehow. Wonderful save by Mike Nash. Great dispossession. And Tyler Kerber reading the attentions. Knocked it clear beyond Shawnee McMahon. Anthony Daly trying to gather it up. Here's Mike Galligan. Stopped by Frank Lowe. Shawnee McMahon again. Needing some assistance, but a bit slow to get in to help him. Oh, he enjoyed his step. On his left hand side. In his last few seconds, barring injury time of the first half, Dave Clark. On towards Mike Houlihan. Sides level, remember. Perla Kerbert. That's across there. Towards Frank Lowe. Seems to be across the side by PJ Ryan. Referee says play on. Back down to Dave Clark. Keeping it away from the Sparrow. But only as far as Liam Doyle playing in a more central role as Mike Gallagher moves into the centre. Fergie Tui now crossing the 45 metre line. Attracting Kieran Carey to him. Trying to avoid the hoop. Still Fergie Tui. Having difficulty getting the shot in. But does so in the end. And he puts it over the bar. And Fergie Tui has given Claire the lead. His first point. I'm sure they now believe that they're in with a right good chance, as indeed they are, with the whole of the second half still to come. Yes, there was a high ball between the Tuhi and, and Herbert. Herbert went up to try and catch with his hand, and he's a half a foot smaller than Tuhi. And that's the end of the first half. Not classical hurling by any manner of means, but if you're a Limerick, or in particular if you're a Clare fan, you won't want to miss the remaining 35 minutes. David Fitzgerald gave Clare an invaluable step forward with a penalty goal seven minutes from half time and it's the Clare following who are raising the flags proudly they're delighted it's Clare 1-5 eight points Limerick seven points so back here for the start of the second half and Limerick making a change at left half back Thurlow Kerbert's gone off Tom Hayes has come on and of course it's Clare who lead by a point Clare with a wind at their backs Limerick and straight away the referee drawing attention to the sideline that there's a Clare player seems to be J.T. O'Connor who's in need of some attention it's going to be interesting Jared to see how Clare will play with the wind in this half Limerick were, were just weren't able to play properly with the wind in the first half and uh, will Clare stay out or will they stay inside waiting for the high balls to come in there are times when, when teams play better against the wind than with it the Clare medical officer is Dr. Paulie Quinn there's the substitute Ty Hayes he had been mentioned in dispatches leading up to this match that he might have replaced Mike Nash, who seemed to be uh, an injury worry much earlier on. Mike had a near infection, but contrary to some reports, he wasn't suffering from vertigo, I'm told. So a quick pause in proceedings here. James O'Connor, the school teacher from St. Flannan's. Gerald Lockdown, the team coach, also a school teacher. then being given to the Clare number 12. And the Limerick mentors at one corner. The fans, a few gaps in the Clare following behind the goal at the Kilinen end. They haven't travelled in as huge numbers as before. That's disappointed with so many failures down the years, but James O'Connor anxious to make amends. He's back at midfield, marking Sean O'Neill. Dave Clark will be the free taker. So 
Akil Malakman pucking into the breeze. To launch Limerick's first attack of the second half, which is broken up by Michael O'Halloran. Not forward. PJ O'Connell. O'Connell hitting a shot from some distance out, straight between the posts, a wonderful goal. Well, he got one in the first half, but that was far better. A fine score by the O'Callaghan Mills player. And now Clare lead by 1-6 to 7 points, a lead of 2 points. This is just what, what Clare needed, a quick score in the second half. He knocked it away from Kieran Carey, did well from a good 50 metres out, straight between the posts. And Clare back in the attack once again. Stephen McNamara can't take it up, leaves it behind to Steve McDonough. The clear incident of the centre, no great long lengthy hitting this afternoon by players in either team really. Sean O'Neill and Frankie Carroll. Frankie didn't make much of an impression in the first half. We'll need to up his performance I feel for the second 35 minutes. I'd be, I'd be a little bit worried if I were Limerick now. Gary's not playing well at centre forward, none of the forwards are playing well in opening it up. And uh, Kieran is not dominating the centre back position. The connection there by Dave Clark down towards TJ Ryan. Brought to ground by Frank Lawn. And it's going to be a free, of course, to Limerick. Gary Kirby will be the taker. Limerick's second free of the second half and just their seventh at all in this Guinness Monster Championship game. So two from four so far for Gary Kirby. And that's got off the post and over the bar. It looked like it was going left. But Gary's fourth point. All of his points coming from freeze. One from a 65. One point the margin. Nice passion and commitment from followers and players all around the ground. A lot of nervous tension as well, however. Mike Houlihan under the dropping ball with Ollie Baker over there. Tyke Hayes trying to make it his. In fact, Hayes, his first touch since coming on as a sub. Shawnee McMahon running straight into Mike Gallagher. Ollie Baker trying to knock it forward. Ball ran kindly for him. Looking for another Clare score. This should be easy for Joe Quaid, and he decides in the end to let it go harmlessly wide. Clare's first wide of the second half and their fourth in all. I, I must say, Jared, that the, the standard of hurling is very poor at the moment. There's, there's no clean striking, there's a lot of tension, there's a lot of hooking, there's no open play, and there's, there's all individuals playing individual games rather than playing in team game. And it's not as if these players didn't have monster final experience. Clare's third time in a row in this showdown, of course, and Limerick's third time in four years. Sean O'Neill, back towards Mike Houlihan. Pat Heffernan trying to get first one on this one, held back by Brian Lowen, free in. The Limerick following in particular, trying to get behind their team, trying to see them play the kind of flowing, dashing hurling they know they're capable of. And Clare's followers doing their best to make sure there isn't another disappointing end to yet another monster final. Gary Kirby will be the taker. Straight in front of the post. The ripple on his jersey indicating the strength of the breeze. And that's gone over the bar. The teams are level for the fifth time. For Limerick to win this game, the five or six players have to up their game. And for Clare to win, Clare have got to believe that they can do it. At times, Limerick look a bit lethargic. PJ O'Connell inside towards Connor Clancy. Mike Nash gave him a lot of latitude. Didn't get a good shot on it, however, Clancy. Joe Quaid coming out from his goal, looking to see where Stephen McNamara was. An effective clearance downfield towards Frankie Carroll. Didn't really get a good connection on it. And to boot it forward. Anthony Daly taking it away from him to Ollie Baker. Frankie gets a partial block on it. Sean O'Neill whips it forward towards TJ Ryan. Ryan trying to take it round the corner, trying to keep it away from Frank Lowen. The Wolf Tones player and Shannon brings him down. Not for the first time in the second half. The referee signaling the free. Quick word, Frank Lowen saying, play fairly. Yes. If you see that again now, you'll see that he has pulled the jersey off him 
Here we go again. TJ Ryan has the ball. Out comes the hand. Catches it. Look. Pulls it. That's the second time within, within one minute that he's done that. Running repairs for TJ Ryan. Should get away from Gary Kirby a little bit to allow him to have maximum concentration on this free. Yeah. Dropped in low. David Fitzgerald has it and he lost it and gives away the 65. Pat Heffernan was almost in for a possible score. I can't understand that TJ Ryan staying outside there tying his laces when he should have been inside around the square. That ball was an ideal ball for a right corner forward. And this is, this is, I don't know, there's something wrong with the attitude in some players that they're not geared and not fully motivated for this. Well, can it be the fact that they won handsomely last year? Yes. Of course, Clare lost to Tipperary the previous year by a big, big margin. That's possible, that's possible. That's come down off the post, batted away by Frank Lowen. Here's Mike Galligan. Liam Doyle, going left and taking it away on his right-hand side. The supply of ball inside now for Gerald Lachlan, the sparrow, wonderful hand pass to James O'Connor, there's a score here for the taking, and he puts it over the bar. Limerick looking sluggish at one end, Clare come down the field through the intervention of Liam Doyle, and in the end, James O'Connor pops it over after a wonderful hand pass, and they lead by a point once again. Again, there's a the situation. Michael Galligan had a chance to get the ball into his hand, misses it, dial clears and scores below at the other end. Clear, a great score for Clare at the other end. Three chances he's had, James O'Connor. Three points he's provided. It's an interesting move that has brought him into midfield for the second game in a row. Yeah, I think he's, that's, that's his position, really. James O'Connor's position is centre field. And I'm surprised when they play, placed him at left half forward. It's going to be a clear sideline ball. The decibel level rises another notch or two. Liam Doyle belted to midfield towards Ollie Baker. Can't contain it the first time. James O'Connor into space nicely. Declan Nash coming across the line here. The left corner back. Making sure that he's not hooked by Connor Clancy. Dave Clark for Limerick. Limerick trailing by that solitary point. Anthony Daly doing well on the half-back line. To James O'Connor, racing away from Kieran Carey, who's not exerting his usual high influence in this match. Inside to Clancy, hand pass back to Stephen McNamara. Closed down initially, around it runs, and Joe Quinn has to make a great save. Loses the stick, trying to get it away from the incoming Clare forwards. It's there for the taking, and the referee says they're going to throw it up on the 20-metre line. Oh, real danger there, and Joe Quay with a blow to the mouth, and he's annoyed because the referee hasn't taken any action. But this is where the danger came, from James O'Connor's ball yes, in here. in here. A good hand pass to Stephen Speed McNamara. He's held off by McDonough. Corner forward is actually coming in. Joe Quaid makes a great save. He's held across the ball, and uh, the ball is thrown in there. I think that's the only thing the referee could have done in that situation. Gerald Auckland, Declan Nash. Nash has it. Lovely pick up. Outside to Mike Houlihan. Houlihan has put an awful lot of hurling, as I said earlier, in the last 18 months, and I think he might be paying for that. That's downfield by Ty Hayes. Anthony Daly coming in there to rescue Clare from a potentially perilous situation, away from Mike Galligan. In there towards Fergal Hagerty. Lovely steal there, wonderful dispossession by Stephen McNamara against the other Steve, Steve McDonough. I, I feel, Jared, that uh, Clare are beginning to think that they, they have a chance of winning this game now. They're beginning to believe in themselves and they're coming forward and attacking. And the crowd are, are, realise this as well for Clare. They've never been this close before, even though there's a good 24 minutes to go. A long, long way. Steve McDonough comes back here again towards Stephen McNamara. Kieran Carey runs into the challenge there of James O'Connor. Secure holding there by Sean O'Neill. Backing back is O'Halloran. Michael O'Halloran for Clare. A six mile bridge player. Attracting three Limerick players to him. They're wanting a decision by the referee that he overheld. Didn't happen. Anthony Daly dispossessed by the by TJ Ryan. Out towards Gary Kirby. Back to Daly again. The referee's whistle sounds. It's going to be a free for Clare. He's speaking to Sean O'Neill. 
expected to lecture there to the Limerick number eight. I get the impression, um, Ger, that a number of the Limerick players seem to be tired. Uh, Gary Kirby seems to be tired now, and I think that's after his tremendous game against Tipperary. And there's nobody else giving him support. Frankie Carroll is not, not even in the game today. Yes, the greater freshness is coming from Anthony Daly's team, and they appreciate it up there in the terraces at the Kalinan end. Is the famine to end here? Tony McMahon from St. Joseph's Dura Bearfield on his own 65 metre line. Whipping it high up into the air, dropping down in front of Conor Clancy. Mike Nash there, Clancy has it however, a little snapshot, and that's gone wide. Appeals for a 65, but it went off the bat by Clancy, unheeded however by referee and umpire. And Claire may well be considering another change. On the sideline, they're preparing one of their subs, Avon Taff, as this dropped in. Wonderful catch there by Clancy. And watch once again as he had the little shot. Did it come off a defender? The umpire said no. Good leap in the air here. Fergie Tui, the hand pass of P.G. O'Connell. Nobody going back to mark him. A real lack of freshness by Limerick. And it's punished an emphatic person. O'Connell's third point. two points but Limerick gave up that time as O'Connell was going through and in particular Kieran Carey watch the number six didn't give chase at all nor the number 20 Ty Kays and that was a relatively easy point it's another free to Claire for a chop down in the middle of the field the referee has a quick word with Mike Hulahan for that Limerick are definitely in trouble now at this stage, Ger. Clare are beginning, their half-back line is beginning to dominate the Limerick half-forward line. And Limerick are not able to get the ball in. Quigley is out of the game, Galligan is out of the game. There's no ball going into Heffernan, so therefore Clare, Clare are cleaning up around here. And they can sense that they have a victory here. It's going to take something like a Limerick goal, I feel, to bring them right back into it and give them a sense of belief. McMahon with the free. Dropped in. High. long long last hopes are high Shawnee McMahon gives them a three point lead switch. there's a switch there Jared. Mike Hoolan has gone to centre back Kieran Carey has gone to centre field well they need to produce something to work some form of an oracle that's McMahon wholehearted now into the challenge there was Fergal Hartley as well beaten by Sean O'Neill O'Neill against Hartley number 8 against number 8 trying to avoid the hoop inside to Quigley lovely sidestep there's a goal chance, and he's kicked it wide. Why didn't he use his stick, you wonder? It was a wonderful sidestep to get away from Michael O'Halloran, to set up the chance for himself, after it was all set up here by Sean O'Neill's delivery. The ball played into space, quickly, wrong-footed, his man, his man being O'Halloran. And here was his chance to have used his hurley, he kicked it and put it wide. I only assume he was expecting a block, which never came. Not Kieran Carey expecting a trip, which did, from Shawnee McMahon. That could be a costly miss there for Limerick. Like, I don't know why Quigley used his leg there. He's tried it twice. Both times the ball has gone wide. He has a hurl in his hand. That's what, that's what a hurl is for. Gary Kirby will take this free. Four from seven has been his record today. Dropped in, saved on the goal line by David Fitzgerald. Beats the rugby block of Quigley, send it back out in the general direction of Kieran Carey. Taken up by Ty Hayes for Limerick. Back in by Shawnee McMahon, playing his heart out up towards Gerald Lachlan and the line ball favouring Clare. Well, everything seems to be going Clare's way this, this half. And they seem to have this, this, this sense that they're, they're going to do it today. Limerick have got to do something and that's, that was an unfortunate miss for Limerick but Clare deserved to get away with it. Well, Ger Lockdown is out, trying to encourage his men, along with his fellow selectors, Tony Considine and Michael McNamara. There's Ger. Took over from the great Len Gaylor, who brought them so close on a couple of occasions. That's missed completely by Ollie Baker. They all stood back from it. But here's Fergie Tui. Again, trying to avoid the hook. Knocks forward towards Connor Clancy. The referee's whistle has signalled. 20 metre free, the foul by Mike Hulahan. 
who doesn't agree with the referee's verdict, the referee Johnny MacDonald from Tipperary, his first Munster senior final. And the referee telling Gerald Lockton and the others to go back as James e. O'Connor looks for another one. He cuts it over the bar. His fourth point from four chances, that one from a free. Delighted, delighted Clare followers. Four points they lead. 17 minutes to go. The thought of Clare perhaps going to Croke Park for maybe an All-Ireland semi-final and who knows what else after that. It's a mouth-watering prospect, but in Limerick they have high hopes as well and their team can get back into it. Pat Hefferden dropped in. Mike Galligan gets away from Anthony Daly. The shot, a vital one, and he gives them renewed hope. Galligan's third point. It was seven last year in this final. He's now playing top of the right. His man is Frank Lowen. Jared, there's still, I don't know, 18 minutes to go. This game is going to go right down to the very end, and it depends on who is the fittest team and who is willing to die out there today. And who's got the stronger nerve and resolve as well? Dave Clark sails over his head, back to Mike Coolahan, now playing centre-half back, having made the switch with Kieran Carey. I think it's Jim McNamara, the substitute who caught that one, and one of the ball boys returns it. Anthony Daly making sure that the slitter was sitting up properly for him. Get a very good connection on the left, but it's Ollie Baker who adds to it. It's out towards Stephen McNamara. McNamara against Steve McDonough. Awkward angle, but that's sailing over the bar. In his first monster final, Stephen McNamara has stretched Clare's lead. I think the cows in the farms of County Clare will be on automatic pilot for the next week if they win this one. 14 points to 10, 111 to 10 points. Kieran Carey takes it from midfield, a good little dash forward, the shoulder by Liam Doyle deemed to be a fair one, and it's Ali Baker who knocks it back towards the inside forwards again, comes off Steve McNamara, outside to the moving forward figure of James O'Connor, O'Connor dashes forward, another injection of pace, short to the grip the stick, it's gone over the ball! Five points from five chances! These player followers are in heaven already. Yes, Jaron, the score came from Kieran Carey losing possession over on the far hand side when he should have left the ball into the square. There's no point in running at this stage of the game. He's got to move it. Too many Limerick players are but a pale shadow of their normal selves this afternoon so far. But they're still tied. Mike Gallagher advancing. Frank Lowen coming across. Well, they won't want to give a free out in some situation like that, and it's Brian Lowen who comes in to rescue Clare once again. That's a huge long delivery to Stephen McNamara. Good movement forward by O'Connell. Quick pick up. Look at the post, and he puts it over. This is a wonderful performance in the second half by Clare. Delirious Clare supporters. I think the famine is about to end. There's Love. still 10 minutes, 15 minutes to go, Joe, but Clare are playing extremely well. Well, they've lost 11 Munster finals, you know, since their last victory in 1932. But they have a six-point lead. They're snapping up their chances, they're eager beaver. They've settled down as a team after the nerves of the opening 35 minutes. TJ Ryan, hand pass forward to Kieran Carey. He's got a man on forward as well, Damien Quigley. Waiting for the shoulder to come in, and a bad hand pass. Well, it comes good eventually to Frankie Carroll. Still some pressure being exerted. Shot in a man clearing the line for Clare. And Limerick considering another change, I can tell you. The number 23 is Brian Tobin. And he's got to come in. And who's about to go off? And and Michael Galligan has got to keep this ball in play. If he goes for a score and it goes over the bar, it's a bonus. But if it goes wide, it's a puck out for Clare. Frankie Carroll's the player who's gone off as Galligan hits it and surrenders possession to Clare to Anthony Daly. Kept going forward there by James O'Connor. There's a Clareman on the ground after that wild pull. 
Ground and the chairman on the ground, maybe Mike Houlihan. So Houlihan, the team captain, receiving attention. It was uh, a confirmation there, by the way, of that substitution. Brian Tobin on for the remaining 13 minutes. Frankie Carroll is off. Well, it was James O'Connor who caught the uh, midfielder, perhaps P.J. O'Connor. Yes, I think at this stage Limerick need a miracle. You know, they need a goal quickly and then to keep on adding points after this. Otherwise, they're in severe, in severe trouble, and they're not doing that. They're running with every ball. They're not giving their full forward line a chance to get the ball in low, and uh, they're being crowded out by Clare Backland as they're playing extremely well. Playing well and playing with determination. Houlihan's back on the feet. Limerick have a free. Gary Kirby will be the taker. His past number of frees have dropped a bit short. This one dropping in again, and once again, goalkeeper David Fitzgerald practically doing this in his sleep, I think, at this stage. He's made so many good fetches, the clearance on a great one. Yes, against the breeze, uh, like, it's a very strong breeze. Now, it's not a mild breeze, it's a strong breeze, and Gary's shot is either... It's just dropping under the bar, which is not good for the forwards. But if Limerick get a goal, this game is, is, is wide open again. It'll make for a fascinating last 11 minutes as Ty Hayes steps up to take the sideline cut, only as far as TJ Ryan. And then watch the eagerness of the chairman. That's Fergie Tui getting it forward somehow as far as Gerald Lachlan. Then selfless running by P.G. O'Connell to get at the end of this. This is great team combination. Wonderful work. And they finish with a point. Oh. It's gone to the left. No, that, that's Clare now doing, doing something silly. That ball should have been kept and played. Come across the field over here to Stephen McNamara, who was available. And that's a, a costly miss. Instead, Joe Quaid has the chance to put the pressure back on the Clare backs. Ollie Baker breaks it down. Whipped forward there by Hayes. Anthony Daly. Will he be lifting the Monster Cup or perhaps Mike Houlihan? At the moment, the odds favour Clare. Limerick heads seem to be dropping a little bit, Ger. Um, they're, not, they're not as hungry for it as, as they were before. Donald Barry is coming into, the, into, um, into some place there. We don't know who's going off. Yes, Donald Barry is moving back into the half-back line for Tyke Hayes. Tyke Hayes' involvement in this monster final only lasted 25 minutes. Anthony Daly runs on there towards Conor Clancy. To Stephen McNamara. He lost it initially, coming back again. Little block there by Mike Nash. Taken here well by Steve McDonough. Over the head of Sean O'Neill, battled down here by Hagerty to James e. O'Connor to take his chance, perhaps down off the post. And that's Donald Barry, first taste of the action. What a good clearance on his far as Conor Clancy. And they're punishing everything this afternoon. Conor Clancy's first point. Every one of the clear forward line has now scored. And that man there in the centre of that crowd just a minute ago is a very proud clear man. There's a Limerick man I saw him there in the crowd. He seemed to be congratulating the man alongside him. There's a very good atmosphere at this final. They're really enjoying it, even though it hasn't been classical fair. But full credit to Clare. They've carried the fight. They've taken their chance. They've got the hunger and the eagerness for victory. P.J. O'Connell, again, waltzing his way forward. Nobody prepared to get in a good challenge. That's to the left, however. And now he's had two chances in the last three minutes. That's four wides in the second half for Clare, just seven in all. Limerick with eight wides, but only one in the second half. Press fallen, Limerick dug out. Jimmy Hartigan, the secretary, was on the left of that group. Clare sideline ball. I really simply have to ask the question whether or not the Limerick players were as focused going into this as they needed to be because having beaten Clare so handily last year they must surely have known that Clare would be full of resolve and toughness this time around Kieran Carey can't get it he's now playing at centre forward having started centre half back then midfield Brian Tobin trying to make it his Sean O'Neill in to help him stopped by Liam Doyle nobody on him but there's a block then as Tobin got back very quickly. O'Halloran was flattened. 
TJ Ryan trying to pick it up. It's been a disjointed Limerick performance this afternoon, a lack of cohesion in their ranks. Ryan picking it up. Oh. But they've really been playing more or less as individuals as we watch a lot of wild clearance from Fergal Hagerty, putting his own defence under some pressure, but admittedly out by the corner. Here's Quigley. Now, here's the only man who's capable of scoring. Quigley is the only man in the forwards at the moment who's capable of scoring a goal. But when you look back, Eamon, and you think about the miss in front of goal when yes. he kicked rather than use the hurry, that could have been a critical turning point. It, it was a critical turning point, and, and a goal at that stage would have, would have set Clare back an awful lot. But it didn't happen, and Clare now are leading by se what, seven points. 114 to 10 points. I have a feeling Gary's gone for a goal, is he? It looks like he's trying to measure this one. And he puts it over the bar. <laughs> Gary Kirby scored six points. They've all come from threes. And in terms of scoring chances so far, Limerick with uh, second half chances, four from nine, nine chances. Clare had 15 chances in the second half so far, and they've taken nine. David Fitzgerald, son of a very proud county secretary in County Clare. So far, that is. Heffernan leaves it behind. Brian Long trying to get a connection on it. Did well. A real pure, stylish hurler, this fellow. Lovely to watch. Down it goes. Off the legs there of Stephen McNamara. Runs loose here to the cornerback, who is Declan Nash. Nash against two clear men. Gerald Lachlan, the sparrow, trying to take it up. Back there by Mike Houlihan. Out it comes as far as James O'Connor. Drops short and goes on. sensation in this game look at the happy faces you see among the Clare following here in Semple Stadium their lead now a lead of seven points I think at this stage some of the Limerick players feel that they're not going to win this game and like there's still five minutes six minutes to go and they should be fighting with everything they've got I wonder was that Fergie Tui down there injured seems to be the referee also taking the opportunity to take some liquid Jerry Lock down with a concerned look some of the Limerick followers are saying bye-bye. They feel their chances have said, or their team has said bye-bye to the Monster Cup. But Clare following, as Fergie Tui limps back into the action, are savouring this wonderful second half for them. Clare stands five minutes away from bridging a 63-year gap. Or is there a miracle comeback for the Shannon Siders from Limerick? Frank Lowen, son of the great Gus, to Shawnee McMahon. Dave Clark going for it. Mike Coulahan stood back, lashed it forward, stopped by the Clare captain Anthony Daly. To Ollie Baker, his goal against Cork, of course, paved the way for Clare to get into this third final in a row. Poor clearance, Mike Galligan has it. Downfield towards Brian Tobin, Limerick beating scores, but goals in particular. That's oh. going right. The groan from Eamon Cregan here alongside me, the poor shot there from Brian Tobin. You can't afford to be sending balls like that wide when you're seven points down with four minutes to go. But that ball should have gone over the bar. It's edgy and nervous all over the field. Jerry Lockdown has looked at the watch. Four minutes to go. That's not forward there by Ali Baker. Out comes Connor Clancy. Scoring chance once again. It's over the ball. shocked monster in 92 and now with an eight-point lead the hurlers are poised to do likewise so many broken hearts down the years as Clare people went home from monster finals in places like Limerick and Thurles and so on Dave Clark knocking it in Limerick need a goal Heffernan perhaps to provide it Brian Tobin misses it Brian Lohan Stumbled, then recovered. Quigley couldn't quite get it past Michael O'Halloran. It comes back out to Anthony Daly. Nobody on him. Michael then takes it down. 
and the referee's whistle is sounded there for a chop down. I think, I think Limerick have actually accepted that they're going to lose. A number of players there are not chasing anymore, they're just letting the Clare fellas off in time instead of pressurising them. Gary Kirby took the free in towards Quigley, and it's Brian Lohan who's out there. Nobody wants to win more than Brian. Brian Lohan getting away from Mike Galligan, winning the race easily. Declan Nash trying to stop Gerald Lachlan, but the Sparrow finds Ollie Baker. Ollie is hooked by Gary Kirby. Gary, Gary having a word with the referee. It's now Ollie that's uh, Fergal Hagerty. Hagerty sending in that shot to the right. But at this stage, with so few minutes left, just about two on my watch, it hardly matters. Jim McInerney is in, I can tell you, just coming into the clear team now. And I'm sure Gerald Lachlan is not doing it for sympathy reasons. He thinks that I'm sure Jim can do a job and do a job very well. And it's good that he's able to share these glorious moments now in one, one of the proudest days for Claire Hurling. Fergie Tui going off. I put a different thing on it. Jerry he's slowing the game down and so the time, wa time is being wasted, which is a clever move on Joe's part. Stephen McNamara has come out to the half forward line. Jim McInerney has gone in top of the left. That's knocked away by Ollie Baker, the hero of Limerick, about to be the hero of Semple Stadium. Fergie, too, we've been congratulated on the sideline, the subs, the mentors, the county board officials. They've never sampled anything like this. I'm thinking about the great John Joe Goggles Doyle. The lone survivor from 1932. I talked to him a little while back. He was looking forward to this day. I'm sure he's proud as Claire bring on number 25, Lorcan Hassett from St. Joseph's Stewart of Bearfield. Play continues. TJ Ryan. Here's Damien Quigley. Stopped by Shawnee McMahon. It hasn't been a classic, but if you're from Claire, who cares? Scoring chances to date. Limerick taking 11 out of 29, Clare taking 17 out of 28. We're inside the last minute. The curse of Biddy Early is about to finish. Nice dash here by Ollie Baker, wasting up a few precious seconds, sending it downfield over the head of Declan Nash, whipped on by Mike Houlihan, Gerald Lachlan towards Jim McInerney. Jim's first touch just showing a little bit of rustiness. He's just into the match. Through towards P.J. O'Connell. Mike Coolahan way back there. Limerick have looked ragged all throughout this match, but that's not to take it from Clare. They've shown the dash. Jim McInerney unable, however, to find the range. Well, I remember a league final. You were involved with 1985. You were coaching Clare against Limerick. And today, in Semple Stadium, we're now just seconds away from the longest, longest bridge in hurling, the 63-year gap that Clare has waited to take the Munster Cup. Fergal Hagerty, aware that he might have been hooked, going for the score. It's there! Clare is suddenly home and dry. The crowd around the field, they think it's all over. They're told to go back by the referee. 117 to 11 points. Sherlock, Sherlock Nan said here in May that Clare would win the Munster Championship. They have beaten Cork and they're about to beat Limerick. Celebrating already there with Tony Considine. They're ready to invade Semple Stadium and I doubt they'll go home before midnight. Work will be put on hold all over the Banner County for at least the next month to ten days. The puck out from Joe Quaid. The referee just prolonging Limerick's agony somewhat. But it really is just academic. Mike Galligan, the foul there on Sean O'Neill, free right. kick, or free quickly taken by Mike Galligan, dropping it into the square. They look for a goal to put a better complexion on this. And it's a save by David Fitzgerald. Penalty score in the first half and some wonderful saves throughout this match. 
Well, Claire have won it! Claire are the Munster champions! 1932! 1995! They came, they believed, they knew they could conquer, and they've done it against a Limerick team that were but a pale shadow of their true selves. The invasion of Semple Stadium. I've never seen anything quite like this. They may have been outnumbered, but they're all ready now to take over the ground, just as their team took over Nimerick. Ger Lockdown, congratulated by Rory Kiley and by Dave Boyle and the Nimerick doctor. What a scene, what a scene. They were hungry for the ball, they won it, they took their scores and they hounded Limerick into the, into the ground. And that's what won it for him in the end. I mean, congratulations to Clare, and who better to, to win it, to lose it to, to a Clare, Clare side of tremendous character. What a proud man Ger must be right now. Clare will be in Crow Park for the all Ireland semi-final. And if they don't celebrate between now and the end of July, they might even make the final. James O'Connor scored six points, P.G. O'Connell got four. And for the record, the full-time score here was Clare, the Masters, by 117 to 11 points. That's Clare winning by nine points. And with me, Conor Clancy, bearing the scars of battle, but it's all worth it, I'm sure, Conor. Definitely, yeah. We've trained long and hard for this for the last October. And uh, we put in many hours of, of hard work and hard efforts, you know. And uh, we were determined to come down here today to do it. Not only for all the people in Clare, but for Tony, Ger and Mike, who put in such great effort and such great faith in us by taking over, taking over last year. And uh, I mean, it's great here today. It's a, it's a great day in Clare and it's going to be a great week, I'm sure. And like Tony's one of the men he, he helped to bring it to. And so did Ger and Mike there. They're, they're three great men, you know. I heard the, uh, the pre-match uh, debate inside in your dressing room. In fact, it was a bit of a psyching session, wasn't it? It was, yeah. Well, in the Bentley Daily there on Sir Lines and a few more, they, they really get the psyche up, you know. And same with there with Mike and Tony. They're great men to psychic team up. And I don't think we need a psychic up today, you know. Well, Anthony uh, Daly did say his dream was to lead G out at Croke Park. And now his dream is fulfilled. But we're looking forward to another four weeks' time. And we'll celebrate for a couple of days, anyways. And uh, we'll get back down to Earth again. And we'll look forward to taking on Galway. Uh, well done. Uh, Tony Constantine is with me as well. I'm sure you're delighted as well. What a marvellous day for everyone from Clare. I'm delighted for everybody here from Clare. You can see the crowd. How many times we come here for the last 63 years and come back empty handed? There was not only funerals going home out of Tullinus. The funerals are over. We're going home today, and the flags are going to be flying high, Tony. Uh, we ran away with the game in the second half, really. You know, we knew at half time if we kept our concentration, kept our composure, that we would beat Limerick, and we beat him fairly comprehensively in the end. You know, it's never a clear team wanted it more, I'd say. Well, there was never as much hunger. I was asked during the week about it. Do we want it? I said we have to want it because if we don't, we have no business going down. We had to prove something for our supporters. You see them around you here. They're ecstatic, and they deserve to be. And you deserve to be as well. Tell me, the early morning starts were worth it, weren't they? The early morning at six o'clock was great. You know, we forget about all the mornings now, and we'll be looking forward to the All Ireland semi-final. Indeed, this isn't the end now, of course. It's only the beginning. Oh, not at all. No, we'll be back in again next week. Then keeping our concentration and getting up to the All Ireland semi-finals. A long time since we were in Crow Park, 1932. We're going to go there, and we're going to do ourselves proud there as well. Tony Constantine, savour the moment. Thank you. Thanks very much, Tony. Thank you. Yes, a great day then at Semple Stadium for the supporters of Clare who were there to see their side crowned Munster champions. Well, Kieran Barr was watching that match with me this afternoon. Kieran, I suppose you would understand very well uh, what those players and supporters went through today because a similar occasion for Antrim when you got through to the All Ireland final. Yeah, it's, it's a great uh, release, sir. It's, it's, sometimes it's unexpected because uh, everybody in the county tries to tell you you're going to do well and you're going to do uh, fantastically on the day, but in the back of your head, you're hoping that things will go well. But you always believe sometimes that you know maybe it's not my day or and there's doubts that creep in so you can see that they're, they're related and they're starting to release a lot of that elation but uh, i think it'll be willie clancy another week now it'll be two weeks of willie clancy this year instead of one but uh, they'll enjoy themselves i'm sure they will i'm sure there's a lot of people in galway hope they continue to enjoy themselves for a few weeks as well <laughs> well i was just saying to you i think some people from gort will probably go down for the week <laughs> down into into um into clare and into ennis but i better mention david and leanne casey from Ennis and their grandfather Pat Carroll and my father-in-law who's in hospital um, they asked me actually and their father told me that he was taking David to the match yeah. and he was saying well he'd be very disappointed and he was last year when they got beaten and he couldn't understand why they were beaten. Kid, children are you know they, they're very clinical sometimes in what they, they, they say yeah. and uh, it'll be great excitement down there now. It's, it was a crucial win for them today in every sense of the word I mean as a result of winning they're now sort of on top of the world but had they lost today three finals in a row what would have happened to them? It's interesting that, that the, this team has developed under 
under Len Gaynor, first of all, and has been taken on and taken a new dimension, I think, under Jern Lucknan. I think both men have to take credit for this team, but it's their new players, I think. Uh, new guys who probably don't have a lot of fear. Guys like Hegarty and Baker. Baker sticks out in your head. Um, Clancy at full forward. Guys who, who we haven't heard of, but now have been clocking up good performances. They've beaten Tip over the last couple of years, Limerick, and now they've beaten Cork, and now they've gone back and beaten Limerick mm -hmm. in a Munster final. So it's not something that hasn't happened overnight, and they were beaten in the league final this year. They've developed, and it's an awful lot of hard work. I hear them talking about early mornings. Those guys are young, they're extremely keen, and they believe in themselves. Yeah. And once you've won something, success will breed success. Now they've won something, they believe in themselves. A bit like the Limerick team last year. They went from the Munster final and went straight to an All-Ireland final and nearly won the thing. Won, probably, but yeah. they're, they're still a good team. Limerick are still a good team. Mm -hmm. uh, there's no doubt about that. But this Clare team hopefully will go on and, and, and do better things. All right, Kieran. Well, we'll have more from Kieran Bauer after the commercial break, plus the selection of Man of the Match from this year's Munster Hurling final. And it was a proud Clare captain indeed, Anthony Daly, who accepted that Munster trophy in Thurless this afternoon. Presentation. He's a Clare man to Anthony Daly, a very proud one. The curse of Biddy Early is consigned to history. The tears today are tears of joy. <laughs> At long last, the long wait is over. You know, after many bitter, frustrating, even humiliating defeats, here we are at long last, having won the Monster Championship. And not, not alone won it, but won it on a fine day in Thurles on a hard ground. Absolutely unbelievable. I think deep down we thought we'd never see the day, but at long last it has come. I think you were convinced, though, this year was your year, because even in the game against Cork beforehand, you had a very positive mental attitude. All the rest of the players seem to feel that as well. Absolutely. I think this bunch of players are the best bunch of players we've ever had. I've said that all along over the last three years because we've, uh, Mike Mack and myself have been involved with Under 21 before they came on to Senior and then I was involved with Lynn again and I've never seen a more committed, more courageous bunch than this, than this group of people and I'd always every conference that they are the crowd that would make the big breakthrough for us. We were waiting 60 years for this and we knew we were in with a chance and we really owed Limerick something after what they did to us last year. So. It was great. We, we weren't going to go down as we had done, and we were, we were properly mentally prepared anyway, you know. The clear half-back line was very strong, particularly in the second half. Well, I, I thought the two boys, Anthony and uh, Liam, the two wing-backs were brilliant because uh, they did the world of sweeping up and they just kept running and running and they, they absolutely cleaned out their boys, you know, and it was, it was great. Everybody, I don't think you could single out anybody really, I thought everybody really pulled their way today, you know. I think that was the first break we got was winning the toss and uh, electing to play against the wind. That was our plan. And we knew if we could just dig in and uh, stay with them at half time that, you know, we'd eventually wear them down. We uh, had seen them against Tipperary and we reckoned that our, our fitness levels were higher than they were than, than, than they. So uh, as I say the plan the plan went to uh, went to order today, yeah. We were on a high coming out again in the second half. And last year like they came out and they blew us off the field in ten minutes in the second half. So we were determined not to let that happen this year. So we hit them with everything we had. And it's all about fitness and thoroughness. You know. If you're not fit and thoroughness, there's no point being there. How far can Clare go in the All-Ireland Championship now? I haven't a clue. I haven't thought about it. I was just geared in for today. As I said to the lads before the game, 25 years ago, I put on the Clare jersey for the first time, always with the aim of winning the Munster final. And we just thought of that. We geared ourselves into winning the Munster final this year, winning the Munster Championship. We've done that, and in a few days' time, we'll think of the future. How will it be celebrated? For a long time, I'm sure. I'm telling you, for a long, long time, and that's for sure, because, as I said in staff, we have so many defeats, so many bitter defeats, especially here in Thurles, that at long last we've come out of here with the Cup. We're Munster champions for the first time in 63 years, and that surely calls for a celebration. Yes, a great day for people like Gerlach Nan, as he said there, who battled long and hard themselves in the Clare jersey. Kieran Barr, one more matter to be uh, finalised about today's Munster final. Who did you pick as man of the match? Well, there were plenty of contenders. I think the goalkeeper had a fantastic game, uh, scoring a penalty and making some brilliant saves. But I, I picked him the last time, and I'm going to pick him again. James O'Connor, I think, has moved to midfield, has worked wonders for the team. And he's an intelligent player who spreads the ball around, but has also showed a lot of guts and a lot of determination and has, and has grown up with this team and has grown up today yeah. and really it was a man, man's man of the match. Um, he was superb throughout and I think he showed a lot of courage and a lot of guts. Well, all of the players today on the Clare team have monster medals as a result of that performance. Jamesy O'Connor now has a gold watch as well to go with that. So well done, Jamesy. Kieran, thank you very much for your thoughts on today's uh, monster final. Well,